channel. Today we are talking all about Coachella. I am not going this year, but I did go for my first time last year. I just wanted to bring you coverage from like a more realistic, normal person standpoint of Coachella. There is so much fucking Coachella content out there and it's all about influencer life or trying to be an influencer life. And I went into Coachella as a very normal person wanting a very normal festival experience. And I went to Coachella as like a major half send because Base Sector was going, not as like my biggest event of the year. This was like, uh, we're gonna pull this out of our ass type situation. I went with two friends who flew in. We decided to camp to make it as cheap as possible, especially because most of the places to stay were probably already taken and we just knew it had to be like a bare minimum. So I could provide all the camping stuff, but I just wanna be here to let you know that it is possible if you are a last minute planner, or even if you're not, I'm here to provide you with all the tips and advice from someone that actually goes to festivals, that knows about festivals. If you are an actual festival goer and this isn't like the one event you go to a year for clout, like, I'm your girl. <laughs> so a lot of this video is going to be about my camping experience and how you can prepare for camping. So there's three pass types. There is tent camping, car camping, and preferred car camping. With Coachella, camping does not come with your pass. You do need to purchase a separate add-on. Tent camping is $102. Car camping is also $102, so it's actually the same exact price, and preferred car camping is $206. From my perspective, the camping grounds weren't that big. You can arrive on Thursday night, but my friends and I couldn't arrive till Friday morning, so we were some of the last people there. So we are in one of the farthest spots, and our walk was still like a million times closer than a walk from an electric forest type situation of camping so I was really impressed you don't really have to worry about too much walking it was like 15 minutes for us to walk into the venue once we left our camping site I heard that when you arrived on Thursday that security was a little bit hard they definitely went through your stuff in the car and the line was really long to get in but when we arrived on Friday probably around noon I would guess we literally didn't wait for a single second. There's no one in front of us. My car was absolutely jam-packed. So they kind of opened it and were like, um, we're gonna have to Tetris this shit back in. You guys are fine. They didn't check anything. Um, but this kind of goes with any festival you go to. We were one of the last cars to go in. So at that point, security realistically is like over it. They're just normal people working a probably not that great paying job. At this point, they were definitely over it. So things like that are always variables that are kind of hard to control you can't really do anything about but it's definitely possible to get lucky because they didn't look at anything in our car and there was no line <laughs> another great thing about the camping area was it's super easy to navigate because they had little street signs that were all numbered they had like an 808 street 807 808 i mean wait what <laughs> 807 806 blah 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 they had everything was numbered so it was really easy to find your way back to your campsite because that is like honestly the biggest struggle when you're fucked up trying to get back to your campsite like there's times even when i'm not fucked up and it will be like the last day of the festival and i'm still like how do i get back what are the landmarks i like go left at the third porta potty and then like what? The numbered rows are definitely a nice touch security to get into the festival was also really pretty much easy. If you're Ubering to the festival or whatever, you kind of get dropped off at the same area that we drove into to get into the camping grounds. Walk through, you kind of go through like a few levels of security where like, I think they like check your wristbands on the first one, or like they ask you to throw out your drinks at the first one. It's kind of like an easy, like people just standing there. I don't remember what order it's in, but I think you do your wristband check. And then after that, they do a bag check and then a body check, something like that. There's like multiple stops through the security. Definitely was like crowded, but nothing too major whenever I went in I probably never waited more than like 10 minutes but they definitely were checking like I see people talk about how they did like sneaking into Coachella and I like had my eyes on what was going on because I wanted to sneak into Coachella weekend two if possible so I could see Nectar again it was definitely risky there was security in place and I personally am not ballsy enough to do that and I'm relatively ballsy definitely not a guarantee so yeah security was like a little tiny bit tighter at this point for me in my opinion so ins and outs to get into the actual festival grounds are okay you can go in and out to your campsite it's super easy but it is not okay for your car to leave the campsite um i don't know how much they actually enforce this 
but from what I know, once your car enters in, you cannot leave. If you're doing like car camping or whatever, they give you a sticker to place on your car, like a decal, and they do like scan the decal. There's some sort of like RFID tag in it. So there is a way for them to keep track, but again, I don't know how much they actually enforce that because we never tried to leave. We did leave for pool parties, which were definitely a little bit far. There was three to five of us splitting the Ubers when we used Uber, so the Ubers were never too crazy. I would guess I probably paid like 10 to 15 dollars each way. They're probably like 30 minutes away from the festival. A lot of you may know that pool parties are a big part of Coachella, especially for the people that are not actually there for the festival and are just there for like the clout or whatever, but I just went to a normal person one. I went to a Dom Dalla pool party at this cool hotel. I can't remember what it's called, but it's like this famous rainbow hotel in the Palm Springs area. If you want to go to these pool parties, that's definitely possible. Also, it was nice because it was like kind of a way to do like a fake shower. So the Uber situation for pool parties was super easy but I actually never left to do any after parties because that is part of Coachella as well but like I said I never tried to go to any after parties but one of my friends did it's complicated but pretty much she went with two people that were staying at a hotel and she was coming back to the festival at the end of the night by herself where the other two people were going back to the hotel she was ubering back to the campgrounds was having a very hard time between her and the uber driver they could not figure out where she was supposed to be that's something else that's kind of rewinding back if you arrive on Thursday it's really easy to follow the traffic to find out where the entrance is but if you're arriving like Friday morning like we did or if you're leaving for an after party and coming back it's super hard to figure out how to get back in my friend was like going in laps with this uber driver and it literally ended up taking her hours to get home because nothing is clearly marked and it's just super confusing even if you're dead sober we were driving in circles trying to get in on the first day it probably took us like 20 to 30 minutes to find out where to go because a lot of the signs were taken away by then so keep that in mind if you're not coming in on thursday morning you might have a hard time finding out where to go to get back into the festival it's a little bit more about the camping environment it was definitely a more quiet environment at least where i was again we arrived late so we were kind of like on the outskirts of the camping area there was no like crazy after parties where i was it was generally quiet but they did still have fun. They had some cool stuff set up that I wasn't really expecting from Coachella. It wasn't near where we were camping, but when you leave the grounds, there's like one main road and we walked all the way down the like main walking road in the camping area, which led us to an area with like food vendors, tented area that had like little fun games to play. Like I think there was like beanbag games and things like that, yard games to play. And there was also like seated areas to chill in. There was like a little area to dance to. And then there was also a couple areas to dance outside under the tents where there was like a silent disco where you can like put on two different channels and dance to whatever the DJs are playing. That was actually really freaking cool because you, you could hear it even when you took the headphones off and like, I don't know if we were just like fucked up. I have a hard time thinking it was that because I'm pretty sure I was pretty sober at this point. The songs were like overlapping and like, if you put the headphones on, you'd hear one. And if you put the other pair of headphones on, you'd hear the other DJ, but the, if you took them off, they're both playing out loud and they like perfectly went together. It was like when you added on the headphones or something and added on like other layers of music. I don't know what's hard to explain. That was like the only silent disco I've ever been impressed by. I was like, yo, we need to stay here. What is happening? So I really enjoy that they had this other thing to do like in the camping area. Other camping festivals I've gone to, there isn't like official things like that that they have put on for you to be entertained. So for the weather, it was definitely hot. I personally didn't think it was like as hot as expected. It was definitely doable, but it was like sunny and dry and I recommend bringing like an easy up or something like that and having a strategy to keep like your cooler and stuff dry whether that just be like moving it around your car to keep it always in the shade and things like that or whatever the heat is definitely an obstacle but it's not something that will like torture you in my opinion it definitely gets cooler at night too because you are in the desert so especially people that are coming from farther away if you are coming from like the east coast my number one complaint by my friends when they come to LA in general, never mind Coachella, is it's always colder than they think it will be like at night or in the winter or like in the spring. They expect to not be cold the whole time, but you definitely still will get cold. It's funny when my friends come to visit in the winter, 
it's my friends that are coming from the actual winter weather into the LA version of winter that are the ones that are most bothered by the cold. Like they're the ones that are always like, can we go inside? Can we get an extra blanket? So definitely be prepared that it will be cold at night. I don't think I was prepared enough even as someone that knew it would be cold. Because it's so dry in this desert climate, you need to bring tons of sunscreen because it will exhaust you if you get burnt, just like if you go to the beach. Also bring like a dust mask, like a bandana or a cute dust mask from one of those cute rave companies. Just bring something because your boogers are gonna be black if you don't do it and you're just gonna be coughing. Honestly, it's kind of suffocating if you get to the point where you've breathed in so much dirt, it's like literally hard to breathe. I didn't have that big of a problem with it at Coachella as I have at places like Hard Summer, which like legitimately suffocating me but definitely keep that in mind the bathrooms in the camping area are all porta potties but I always thought they were pretty clean there was never big lines at them either and then there was also showers but the showers always had really long lines at the peak time so if you're waking up at like 10 11 a.m. and are looking to roll through and get a shower after you wake up when it starts to get really hot you just want to walk over to take a shower newsflash it ain't gonna happen you're gonna be waiting in line for like over an hour the lines were really long like wrapping around in circles so either wake up really earlier or be okay with taking your shower and starting your day a little bit later than you wanted to and a little bit later than what everyone else is doing i can't remember how much it costs but i'm pretty sure they cost money i'm assuming they probably cost between five to ten dollars that's generally what the gist is. If you've never camped at a festival before, I have other videos on how to prepare for camping at a festival in general because pretty much everything else I could tell you is just like generalized information, not specifically to Coachella. If you don't know where to start with getting ready to camp at a festival, definitely check out my video that I'll either have linked down below or at the end of this video. I had a great experience camping at Coachella. I would definitely camp at Coachella again. I was really worried about going into Coachella and it just being like this phony experience where I didn't actually feel like I was at a festival because at the end of the day, this is like the one festival that people that don't go to festivals always go to. So I really thought it would just be sad to me to go to a festival like that, but I feel like camping gave me the experience that I was at a festival just like any other one, and there was other people that were interested in festivals the same way that I am and are just there to enjoy the music and have fun camping and stuff like that. So definitely go into the festival with an open mind because you have an opportunity to have um, pretty much just as much fun as you would at any other festival if that's what you're interested in. It doesn't have to be all about the Instagram and all that. If you don't already know, all my videos on this channel are all about festivals, so vlogs how to prepare, festival fashion, literally anything that I can make have to do with festivals and EDM is on this channel. Please subscribe if you want more festival content in your life. Hit the bell if you want to be notified every single time that I upload. And you can follow me on Instagram and Twitter if you want to be notified for all the daily stuff. Thank you so much for watching. I have so much fun at Coachella. I am a little bit jealous because it is so close to me. It's kind of an easy send for me, but I will not be going this year. Maybe next year. Who knows? Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in my next video. Bye!